My name is Daniel Graverson. I'm the founder of PI Archiving. I'm an SAP mentor and I've been working with SAP process integration for the last six, six and a half years. Um, one of the issues that I've been working a lot with is the archiving and got a lot of questions about what is it and how does it, does it work. So I'd like to clear out some of these perspectives with you now. Um, so the, the issues I'd like to talk to you today about is the following. Well, first off, why do we take the time and archive the messages? Uh, what's the different type of messages? Uh, or what's the different type of archiving? And what is the technical archiving? Uh, and what is content archiving? So th which are the two different uh, main purposes of archiving. So let, let's start with what is the issues uh, of PI archiving or why are we we're doing it? Well, first off, there may be some regulatory compliances that, that say we need to be able to make this document or uh, be able to retain or create the, recreate the document or show the original document in a way that, that is plausible and that holds in, in court if, if that is uh, an issue. Uh, we also do some archiving if we want to help uh, debug uh, older messages. And there's also the, the whole purpose of having the electronic invoice and be able to, to see it and to be able to find it really easy so maybe even a business person can see this is the invoice we have sent. And that's the reason why we, we ordered only five windows instead of 5,000 windows because of a, a comma problem or something like that, that would really uh, speed up uh, businesses if they, they didn't have to have that many problems with getting through the, the business or getting through uh, the, the support level of the, the PI uh, organization. So the two types of uh, archiving that I see is uh, first off there's the technical archiving where we we are archiving messages from the runtime um, this is in the great integration engine and in adapter engine if we did not do this these database would just fill up and we won't be able to process any messages we would have to pur purchase a lot of e extra disk space for the database um, and that would probably not be really cost efficient because it's not adding a, a lot of value to have the, the messages inside the PI, but we need to copy them out and put them in some kind of file system we can just access uh, in an easy manner instead of having to fill up the runtime database that will just slow down the whole system. So that's uh, the reason why we do it. And then the, the, the information important here is how messages were sent from one system to another system um, and how that all worked. So the other thing uh, is the content. Sometimes we want to be able to archive the content and say, ah, this is the message we got from, from this person. So that's a, s a slight difference when the, the archive, the technical is where the, the, the whole process is relevant for, for the content. It's just, we send this message, save that message and give it to me when I ask for it. So for the technical archiving, it can be done in two different ways. Uh, we have the adapter framework and the integration engine uh, as it looks at, at the moment and that probably will take a few a few years before the, the integration engine will, will be uh, removed. But in the integration engine you have the, you can configure this in the SXMB underscore admin where you can uh, create uh, retention and uh, periods for, for per interface level and say these messages should only be archived in five minutes or days, five days and these should be archived in 
I don't know, 100 days, if, if that is relevant for you. Uh, probably you prob a week, maybe 10 days is probably sufficient in most cases, uh, is my experience in this. Um, and then you are create a do archiving job that archives the messages and then the delete job that deletes all the messages that has been archived. It's you just have to schedule them in the correct order and make sure that both of these jobs is running. Otherwise you won't have the messages uh, deleted correctly. Uh, and this frees up the database so the process can, uh, new data can be inserted and the process can run even faster. Uh, the other part of it is the uh, part in the integration uh, adapter engine. Previously, you had to do something. Uh, previously, seven, one or something like that. You had to do something on the adapter en engine. Now it looks like it's possible to do it from the app transaction, where you can archive uh, these message tables. Uh, What's important here is uh, the communication logs that you might have something like we got this email from a person or what what the information wa of relevance was for you. Um, another part of this that is interesting in could be the S-MIME. If you're sending encrypted messages or SOAP messages uh, and you have archive, uh, you have signatures based on these these information might be relevant and something that that you need to to send to the other person or say we got this um, message or the signature saying that it is really from you and not just some other guy trying to send messages into our system the other part is the content archiving and well, good part of the, the content archiving can be done for, for debugging testing. If you have the, if the business comes and say, well, we had a problem, this uh, edifact message looks totally different than we expected inside the ERP uh, the system. And then you can, if the message is still not archived in the integration engine, you might be able to, to view it there and see, ah, it was mapped like this. Otherwise, you need to extract the message and then you can, from, from your content archive, and then you can send it through the test system and you can see, ah, this was what happened. Th these messages was processed like this and we forgot this field because of whatever reason was. So so that's really useful in that perspective. The other was, as I spoke about earlier, the legal reasons. Uh, we want to be compliant and store the documents in the way they're supposed to be for the period that sh should be uh, archived in. Um, here it's the content that is important. Um, we don't care basically when it was sent we just want the message and hopefully this was also easily understandable for the business so they can see ah this was the message we got here's how it worked and this was uh, the whole procedure behind it so the option options for for this kind of archiving is much bigger there's uh, some standard features uh, in SAP where you have the the file based uh, adapter if you're using ftp or file you can say archive in this folder and then this folder would be the place where the files would be archived with the timestamp or the grid or whatever you you select as archiving documentation alternatively you can when you're receiving a message you can also route it to uh, do a split routing and route it to the archiving system where you can archive the message and say, ah, well, this was the message we got and put it in the file store and database, whatever you, you find relevant for this. These are the two, well, standard ways of, of, of making documentation, of making archiving of the content. 
Uh, other options include creating some adapter modules that will uh, make it possible for you to uh, pick out the message and do something with it, like save it on the file, uh, store it, put it in a content server, or do something with it while you're receiving it. The other is you can use some RFC barbies uh, for the uh, RFCs for the content server and say we'll, we'll archive it on the SAP content server. Or you can create, uh, use an independent software vendors uh, module for it, like Mind PI archiving, where you can archive the messages uh, easily. So where could we store these uh, data? Um, well, the, the, the easiest place uh, for any, uh, yeah, any scenario is, is on the local file system of the server, because then you don't have to worry much about getting connections and getting system up and running. Be sure that you have the database running and oh, that, yeah. The issue with this is uh, often this is stored in a high priced uh, SANE or any other environment that might not be cost efficient to have the data and you might not be able to access it the way you want it. So you need to, ar probably you need to archive it other places. You can do it on the FTP server, probably still the same. Uh, the FTP server could probably be created a bit cheaper than the, the PI server. Uh, you have the SAP content server where you can store files in. There's also some third party content servers um, out there, so the open text or XS or something like that, that could be relevant to store the content in. Basically, it's still also just saving it on, on the file, but you have a better view of getting access to these uh, information. Uh, the tape drives, I don't think that is really useful uh, for, 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 for this purpose because if you want to get one message, you have to run through the whole tape. Hopefully you have a good index so you know, uh, well, it's here and then we pick it out. I haven't seen a lot of people using the, the tape drives uh, for, for this kind of archiving. And then you could use some cloud-based uh, options like Amazon S3, uh, which is a, 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 a content server created by Amazon where you can just upload files and they'll take care of the disk space. And you just have to pay how far much disk space and how much network usage you're doing. So it is a really simple solution to, to get started on. And well, the solution I have uh, created is what I would say really simple. Um, you could probably be up and running in half an hour if you have access to deploy uh, to your PI system. If not, that probably would take a bit longer. Uh, but you just have to deploy the SCA uh, that have, is provided and then you can start creating your configuration where you want to store the information, uh, the, the messages that the message can either be stored on the local FTP, uh, local file server or you can store it on Amazon S3 cloud where you can just say we'll, we encrypt it, place it up there and then everything really works quite simple. Uh, also, I'm extracting the some metadata from the message. Metadata in this perspective could be the invoice number, it could be the send ID, it could be receiver ID, it could be transaction number or other kinds of information that is relevant for finding the message again. Um, it can be done both for ed edifact messages where this would actually be done automatically, where it's the message is recognized as an edifact and would extract these fields that are relevant for edifact. Or an XML where you can say these, with an XPath expression, these is the information that is relevant for my case. 
it is actually quite attractive to get started on it. <laughs> it's free, so you can actually just download it, try it out, and see if it uh, helps you in, in the business context you are in. So uh, I hope that this has been helpful and been enlightening in, in how you can use SAP process integration, uh, what the different type of archiving is, how it works, and hopefully you'll you'll go and, and try out my, my new product and, and see how it works. So thank you for watching.